I'll now share my screen, just one second, please. Okay. Okay, so basically as Helen mentioned in this uh, very good introduction is what we tried to have in this project as part of strand two basically we tried to organize four experiments in the sense that we tried to see how can we have an experimental introduction of rri and open science into organizations using the quadruple helix approach and we had four very good use cases from which two you will see today after i finish this presentation is very very short introduction over the experiments so uh, one, uh, one of the experiments was focused on completely redesigning the R&D unit by infusing RRI principles. Another one was on photonics and optical monitoring, and basically these two will be presented later on today. The third one was on material science, and the fourth one on text and data mining, as all these main sectors are key sectors for infusing RRI into organizations as was as it was identified by our scale gap analysis performed in the beginning of this project. Now all the four experiments have followed a standardized approach so we have something called an experiment organization methodology that you can see here on the screen. So uh, this specific methodology was done in co-creation with the project partners and it is based on various stages, starting from an appraisal stage where we try to identify and map on the RRI pillars that each experiment should focus upon, as well as to identify internal and external stakeholders and consult them in order to trigger the quadruple helix collaboration. Then we had the design stage where we set the objectives for each experiment and prepared the specific collaborative paradigms and approaches that allows the quadruple helix co-creation required to infuse RRI into an ongoing or new research project from those organizations. And then we had the implementation stage that you will see a bit more examples today from the next two presentations, how this went. And utmost and the most important part of this, we had a very detailed and unified measurement and monitoring of the experiment in the sense that we have devised a very detailed list of indicators that allow us to see to what extent RRI and open science was embedded in organizations, in organizational streams, and to what extent this has triggered institutional change and policy changes inside the organizations in terms of ensuring a proper co-creation with the external quadruple helix stakeholders. Because at the end of the day, the whole goal was to see if this embedment is feasible at the end of the day, and the answer is yes, as uh, you will most likely get access to our comparative and final reports from the experiments and you will see the main lessons learned from this process in the sense that even though in the beginning okay i can say it in a nutshell even though in the beginning there was a lack of major lack of awareness of rri in these organizations but at the end of the experiments after the two years that uh, we started talking about uh, this type of processes, organizations understood the importance and the benefit that RRI does bring to each type of stakeholders. And therefore, they are taking active uh, means in order to push it forward and to require more funding to help the organizations properly embed and sustain RRI in all of their future operations. And it doesn't necessarily have to, we don't talk only about universities. We talk about associations, industry, and all type of stakeholders that saw the real benefit of RRI. Uh, but now, without uh, more focus on the theory behind this, I would like to move towards the two, uh, two, two demonstrations, the two use cases, the experiments. And I think we will start with, uh, with Raquel, right? We'll start with the first experiment presented by Raquel, focusing on the RRI model. So I'll stop sharing my screen. <laughs> 